Blue Magic Woman, Excerpts, Part 5. This is from page 24. Since Michael cannot find a place in the ward without the crazies, he suddenly realizes that his writing has always been a way to escape. He finds paper and a pen in the common room and sits at a table hoping to enter another world. As he struggles to find the words and images of another possible world, a flood of cold sweat drenches his body. He wants to scream if he could, but he would need more air to scream as his lungs tighten and squeeze his air pipe, as he feels he is breathing through a small straw, breathing like the ward is running out of air. But even if he finds the words, there is enough strength in his mind or air in his lungs to push out the words. Michael feels it is terrible that his strong hand, which used to be so agile writing in the cafes near the University of Denver, where he did most of his writing, has no strength, and his hand feels so weak. He remembers that his girlfriend Laura had always admired his storytelling talents. Looking for ideas and moving his eyes to the view outside the window, he concentrates on a line of cold mauve above the gray silhouette of the hospital church, and in the empty courtyard, he sees a squirrel sitting frozen like he is. Suddenly, Gabriella, another patient, enters abruptly and savagely like a scared stallion who comes to a standstill in the common room. She turns and looks back at Michael and then twirls herself backwards on the tiled floor until she's a kaleidoscope of a rippling skirt, flashing thighs and twisting dark hair that covers half of her face. Inside his mind, she is so often naked. She must have been beautiful before with her slightly curved nose and large green eyes that now, however, look vacant in a rather haunted way. She tosses her heavy tassels of hair like a wild horse, and her dark eyes look confused. And as she turns around again, she seems to be wondering what Michael is doing. As she shifts the weight of her feet, the strange distraction increases for Michael, with the diffused menace of a suddenly motionless intruder in the fluorescent light of the room. For the moment, it all seems unreal. Michael then looks closer at Gabriella's features that are troubled and quiver like something visible through disturbed water. As he looks away from her stare and around the common room, he finds the other patients are hunched over their pulled up legs in the armchairs, shrinking into themselves like sick spiders. Michael, a stranger in this asylum, wants to have the sensual experience of another world, as with his writing. He hopes he can romp like the mind of God. But the somber gravity of Gabriella seems to pull all things into the shadows of his mind. What are you doing? Gabriella asks with a face that looks imprisoned in a depressed splash of dark color. I'm trying to write, if you'd leave me alone, he says with insistence. I've got a birthday present for you, she says with a wink. Thanks but it's not my birthday. Gabriella tears at her dress, heaving it up, pulls her panties down like she's anxiously unwrapping his birthday present, and gives her silk panties to Michael. Wow, but I already have underwear, he says with a smile on his face. Don't tell Brigida that I gave them to you. Keep them under your pillow, and tonight you can smell me. Brigitte suddenly comes into the room and with an intense stare of a cobra asks Michael why he's talking with Gabriella. I told her that I'm trying to write, Michael says, quickly shoving the panties into his back pocket and senses that he is in a room filled with wild animals. I thought that you only spoke to Marlowe about your writing, she says with an angry tone. And as she marches from the room, her tight blue jeans move upon her body, as if she were naked underneath, and Michael's confused eyes follow her blue streak, as the daylight coming through the window is turning dark blue. With the thought of her naked body out of his mind, 
He squirrels his eyes, trying to focus on the view out the window, only to see the gaunt facade of the broken asylum walls, wrinkled with shadows. It seems to Michael as if the dark clouds are pasted against the sky. The world doesn't seem real.